applause, a big welcome to Jeremy Corbyn MP. Thank you, thank you Chris. And Chris, you've suddenly elevated me to be in the mainstream. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a place that uh, has been eluding me for quite a while. Could I just say, first of all, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for coming. And thank you all for raising a voice for peace. That's what we're about. The Stop the War Coalition is what it says on the tin, the Stop the War Coalition. CND is what it says, the campaign against nuclear war. All the other groups, Scientists for Global Responsibility, Pax Christie, and so many others that I've seen here today are here for the same purpose, to try to bring about peace in this terrible situation. Obviously, the Russian invasion was wrong. We all know that. Obviously, the consequence of that invasion are thousands of dead in Ukraine, thousands of Russian conscripted soldiers dead and being taken back, and tens of thousands of refugees going to other parts of Europe. And as we predicted at the time of our opposition to the Iraq war, wars have consequences the hatred, the terrorism, the refugees, the poverty, and the wars of tomorrow are all formed by the wars of today. So this is an opportunity being put forward by the General Secretary of the United Nations and the vast majority of nations in the UN, by the Pope, by a number of world leaders, particularly Latin American ones such as President Petro and President Lula of Brazil, and many others to try to say, now is the time and the opportunity to call a halt, to have negotiations, to investigate the crimes that have happened, but above all, to bring about a peaceful solution. Because the alternative is the escalation of this war. The alternative is the war crossing national frontiers. The alternative is a dissent into the abyss of a nuclear conflict in Europe. That is the alternative. And so when our Defence Secretary blithely talks about how he expects Britain to be at war within seven years, my reply to him is, what are you doing to prevent the descent into war that we are being dragged into? What are you doing to try and bring about peace? We live in a world where the COVID crisis showed how vulnerable we are to contagious diseases, where the unbelievable levels of poverty of the poorest in the poorest countries and the poverty of the poorest in the richest countries should be a shame on all of us. We have an economic system that is enriching the richest and powerful at the expense of the poor majority all over the world and in this country too. We can and must do better and differently than that. That is why our demand today is for peace. Our demand today is for social justice. Our demand today is for the world's resources to be used to conquer the danger of environmental destruction of this planet. The science and skill that can make weapons of mass destruction can also generate green energy, proper medicine, and protection of our natural world and our environment. And so, Many of the media will condemn us today as being stooges of goodness knows who by being here today. We are not. We are ordinary people from all walks of life and all parts of this country, indeed many other parts of the world, who are making that simple call that a war will solve nothing other than the killing and destruction of so many lives. And whilst I absolutely welcome and support all the Ukrainian refugees that have made their homes in this country. I feel for them, I support them, and I welcome them. We should extend the same welcome and the same support to victims of war in Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, Palestine, and so many other places. It is about the kind of world we want to live in. So today, we're here raising that voice for peace. We're raising that voice for peace because it's the only voice that should be raised today. And so, let's march through the streets and say, our demand, stop the fighting, investigate the crimes, bring about peace, bring about a peaceful future, 
where the people of Ukraine and Russia can peacefully decide their own future. Escalation of the war is very, very dangerous, not just for the people immediately in the area of conflict, but for the peoples of initially Europe and ultimately the whole of the war. I'll just finish with this. If all the protagonists in this conflict can come together to discuss the supply of grain to the world and come to an agreement by which ships carrying the wheat from Ukraine and Russia can go to feed other people in other parts of the world. If the US is capable of contacting Russia to say that President Biden is visiting Kiev, then it is obviously possible they could come together for serious talks and serious negotiations to stop the fighting, stop the killing, stop the conflict and bring about peace and justice. Thank you very much.